I have a question, right? How many of you guys remember the Hebrew Israelites? When I'm talking about the Hebrew Israelites, I'm not specifically talking about the people in the Bible, per se. I mean, same thing, right in hand. But I'm specifically talking about the guys, the camps, the Hebrew Israelite camps that was in every major city. They're still in every, some of them are still in every major city. But there was a time when it was out there on a large scale, on a grand scale. Isn't it safe to say with everything that's transpiring in America right now that everything that they were preaching, everything that they were talking about on whether it be YouTube or if you ran into them on the street, isn't it safe to say that they were right? Kind of galling when you realize that nutbags with the cardboard signs had it right the whole time. See now, this is one of the reasons why I stepped back from talking so much about the Bible and the Israelites. And I'm not saying this, it was right for me to do that, but I can remember in 2014, that was the last year I stopped going so hard about it. Prior to, from 2012 to 2014, I was like on this crazy rampage trying to tell everybody about the Bible, telling them who we are as the Israelites, telling them about the scriptures in the Bible. And ever since 2014, I've been low key about that. I wouldn't say I went back into the world, but it's like when I hear conversations and debates about the Bible and religion and this and that, I just kind of like just step back and I just be quiet. I stopped trying to... I stopped trying to get in the base with everybody and stop trying to force everything down people's throats because in the midst of all of that, you have the comedic community. Oh, we're not no damn Israelites. The Israelites is a white man Bible. King James was a homosexual. Um, we're from Egypt. We're from Kemet. We're descendants of Kemet. Then you have the nation of Islam people. Uh, we need to follow Islam. We're, we're, we're from the tribe of Shabazz. Then you got it's like a whole it's a bunch of confusion then you got the moors community you got a bunch of people saying we're moors and that right in there is like a whole bunch of confusion within itself because when you look back at the history of the moors they were also israelites but they had a mixture of the teachings of the scriptures and islam shalom I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Raka Kodash, and double honor unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect, beginning with the 144,000 men. This is Brother Eroshalam coming at you with another video through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Raka Kodash. All right, the name of this one is a response. The Hebrew Israelites were right, but I'm conflicted. Right, and there's a response to the elder Monaki Zakba out there in South Carolina. Right, beloved elder. Alright, and about this video, you know, basically that you just watched. About this man here, you know, who basically um, you know, was admitting that the Hebrew Israelites were right. You know, but uh he was pretty much conflicted. Alright, saying that, you know, um a few years years ago, you know, twenty fourteen, I believe, which is ten years ago. Alright, you know, he stopped he stopped spreading the word. You know that we are the Israelites and whatnot, and and it, and from his own um, from his own mouth, basically, you know he he got conflicted by taught here and about the nation of Islam, the Moors, the uh the, the Egyptology group, the unconscious group. All right, you know, and um, basically, you know, he he stopped he stopped preaching or doing the work. All right, you know, and um, you know, if you, if you continue listening to the video, which you should go and watch the elders' video, you know, very edifying. You know, you know, he he goes in, he went into it, you know. He went into some a lot more detail. But you know, the basic gist is that, you know, he knows that the Israelites are, are true and that we are Hebrew Israelites for sure. But you know, you know, based on he just wants everybody to get along. Right? All Israelites are Israelites, and that's that's not the facts. Right? It's about doctrine. Right? The doctrine is very important. Alright? You know? And um basically, you know. We know we know that that this truth is the truth, you know, and we know from the from the Great Millstone, the apostles of Great Millstone on down, that this is the hundred percent doctrine, right? For the Lord said that you know His Holy Spirit will teach us all things, 
All right, and we have the 100% doctrine for salvation. You best believe that. All right, and um, you know, um, <laughs> I'm gonna tackle, I'm gonna tackle the, 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 the I'm gonna tackle this a little differently in terms of um, pushing the word. All right, because um, the elder apostle Taha had said based on this video, you know, that it's really true. A lot of, a lot of Israelites, you know, fell off. All right, when it became unpopular for to be an Israelite. All right, that's roughly paraphrasing what the apostle said. All right, and um, what the Lord told us to do as a strict commandment is this: um, the book of Isaiah, Isaiah sixty-two. This is what a, this is what a man in the Lord is supposed to be doing. Isaiah sixty-two, verse six. All right, he said, "I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night." All right. So, in other words, we're supposed to be pushing this wood in, in and out, day in, day out. All right? Rendering our body what? A living sacrifice. All right? That goes back into the book of Romans, the 12th chapter. All right? It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, which means separate, acceptable unto Heavenly Father, which is your reasonable service. All right? So we, we, our bodies are burnt offering, no sacrifice unto the Lord. You know, basically putting them first, giving them first priority to do the work. All right? Over everything. You know, work, family, uh, you name it, hobbies. All right? The work comes first. Because why we were chosen. We didn't choose the Lord. The Lord chose us to be what? A watchman. All right? Isaiah 62 and 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Right? Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. So he, so he, he kept silence after 2014. Right? Stop preaching the word, although you know the Israelites are, are, are true. You know, so basically he said he didn't go back into the world, but you know, basically it, it basically it did. Because if you're sleeping on this information, you know, when the Lord comes, what 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 what, what, what he's gonna do to you? Alright? You know, um, you know. Verse 7 says, And give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So he, so he wasn't supposed to stop. You can't stop doing the work. Alright? You know, when they start this work, there ain't no stopping it. Okay? And not to say that he, he was going on the highways and byways, but in his part, in his lot, whatever he was doing, he stopped doing it. Alright? And it's something that you can't do. Alright? You know, um, let's get another precept here. Psalm 19. And um, verse 1, it says, The heavens declare the glory of the heavenly Father, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Right? Day on today, just speaking about the internet, you know, the signal bouncing off the satellites. All right? Day on today, uttereth speech, and night on night showeth knowledge. So constant video is going up. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world right in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun so this is this is how the importance of, of, of pushing this wood all right so which wood has to go out there you know um to the elect okay the wood must go out there for the elect to seal the elect because you know the lord said it, he's coming for those who have faith you know and um if you don't have faith you know you can't make and how do you get faith faith come by hearing and hearing by the word Right, Romans 10, verse, verse um, so I said Romans 10, and verse, verse 14. Well, for I'll start verse 13. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are we going to find out the name of the Lord? Unless it be taught. All right? You'd have to be taught. As the scripture say, you're going to send pastors according to his own heart. All right? You know, you hear, you hear a, a, a voice, you know, basically. Behind there. Okay? Because most of the world they ain't, they ain't calling on the true names. They're calling on Jesus Christ. They're calling on uh, uh, Yeshua. Alright? All this bullshit. When it's really Yahweh Shai, that's the name of the Lord, our Savior. And Yahweh, the Heavenly Father. Alright? Verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Right? So, you know, how can I call him? So, so, so let's listen carefully. And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard right but how do you hear you from from the men of the lord 
and how shall they how shall they hear without a preacher right there you go a preacher so you have to do the work you can't take your hand from the plow you can't stop doing this work all right um and let's go here isaiah isaiah 30 verse 20 when you hear this word and you call out to the world you know to learn you learn the word and then you go out and teach all right isaiah 30 and 20 and though the lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore so you can't remove your own self into the corner and tell yourself that you know you're stopping teaching no you can't do that you've been chosen because as the scripture going to continue in romans um 10 chapter yeah you, ha you have to be sent so you were sent to do our work right and you can't take it upon yourself to say that you're going to stop no that's what you are you're bashing your shy going to out your light it says um yet shall not not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore but thine eye shall see thy teachers and thine ear shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left so they're gonna get their guidance from the men of the lord right because the lord said he gave us what passes according to his own heart all right jeremiah 3 verse 15 i will give you pastors according to my heart right whose heart the heart of yahweh basham yahweh shai the lord yahweh the name of the heavenly father and yahweh shai the name of the only begotten son the true names all right which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding so if you pull back and you don't feed the sheep you know as the lord gave us strict commandment you know the, the, you know the, the sheep gonna be starving okay and when the sheep starve they're gonna die all right romans 10 and 15 and how shall they preach except they be sent that's right so you were chosen and sent out there all right as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things all right okay but they have not all obeyed the gospel for isaiah said lord who had believed our report only the elect is given to believe all right but before that you have to push that word you have to make that word heard okay you know um for the elect to be sealed okay um let's get this here book of james james 2 believe it's a 15 verse it says um if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto him depart in peace be ye warmed and filled notwithstanding give him not those things which are needful to the body what does it profit even so faith if it had not works is dead being alone so you have the faith you know but you you keeping that to yourself you're not going out there and and showing your faith by your works all right yeah a man may say thou hast faith yes yeah, so you believe we are israelites all right you believe the israelites all right you know we are the israelites but you didn't where, where's where, where's your works all right yeah a man may say thou hast faith and i have works show me thy faith without thy works and i will show thee my faith by my works and why is faith so important because faith and works is what determines salvation faith in yahweh shai all right second Ezra, the ninth chapter all right and the um the seventh verse it says and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith so once you have the works you know you have faith but faith alone it can't save you right you know so all is all predestination we know that but at the end of the day you know if you don't have that works you're not going to make it second address nine and seven and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed right and shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders for i have sanctified them for me from the beginning that's what we're saying from the beginning okay right because and because from the beginning the men of the lord the prophets of the lord were sent you know it's nothing new under the sun the, 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 the um spirit of the prophet is subject unto the prophets all right just as we were sent out to do the work by yahweh shai you know back then you know we sent in this time too the men of the lord it says matthew 22 and verse verse 9 right it says <clears throat> 
Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. So the men of the Lord go now there to the highways and the byways, obey in your shy. And because we have we obey, we have a promise that the Lord made, you know, you know, which the Lord said he, he would not he not he's not unrighteous to forget our, our labor of love. Or labor roughly paraphrasing. Alright? And he made a promise that, you know, you know, basically, let me let me get here. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. He says, He said, This is your wish I speak, and you see the red writing. He said, Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, right? I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the, the earth. Slack here. In the NLT it says, Revelation 3 and 10, Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, right? To persevere under what? Affliction, as we under. Alright? You know, as we do new work, we're being afflicted. Alright? As we get the gift of the Holy Spirit, we get the gift of the, we get, we get the fire as well along with it to keep us grounded. That's the balance. Alright? The afflictions, you know? In our body, in our mind. Okay? And we have to endure, right? Because you have obeyed my command to persevere. So why are we going through all that hell? You know, plagues in the mind, sicknesses, other things in our body. You know, um, you know, we have to persevere and continue to push this word, right? So because we do that, because we obey, because you have obeyed my commandment to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. And um, we talking about the MOTB here. The, the RFID C hip. Alright, micro C hip. Okay? Which the whole earth will be tested by. But the men of the Lord, we, we're going to be preserved by the Lord. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. You know, because we did, you obeyed him. Alright? You know, so we didn't just know it was right. It's more to just, it's more to than, you know, just knowing you're Israelite. Alright, you have to push the proper doctrine, the full 100% doctrine. And that's why we don't, uh, a whole no. Any unity camps with these other camps because the doctrine is off as hell. They don't have the full doctrine that Yahweh Shai came with that he, from the Father with. Alright? So you don't get conflicted and confounded by these um, nations of Islam, the Moors, the Egyptologists. All of them is preaching a bag of bullshit. Right? A bag of bullshit. Okay? That's just fit to flush down the toilet. Alright? You know, if you don't clog up the flicking toilet, you know, because it's, it's, so, it's so clumpy. It's nonsense and the filth that they're talking. Alright? And really and truly, all of them going to go and take that MOTB. And they're going to be destroyed. Alright? That's the importance of having the correct doctrine. Alright? Facts. You know? So you have to obey Yahweh Shai. Because a, a great judgment is coming on those, you know, who don't disobey, who, who put, put, preach their own doctrine. For whatever reason, whether they deceive by a, a spirit that the Lord sent unto them, because they're not of elect, right? Because only election will receive this, Romans 11 and 7, all right? Or whether they took the bag, you know, and they're preaching the wrong things, you know, because why? They are uh, uh, their mouth, it basically, um, basically, um, as the scripture says, in fact, let me, let me don't butcher the, the, don't butcher the scripture. Uh, so like Exodus 23, verse 8, And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blinded the wise, and perverted the words of the righteous. So this gift, the bag, it blinded them. Money, love of money. Right? And pervert the words of the righteous. So they don't speak right things. The doctrine is off. Alright? It's steel. It's it, it, it it's it's corrupt. It's putrid. Alright? And only fit for what? Destruction. And that's exactly what you're gonna get if you're preaching the wrong doctrine. And for those of you who were these other camps, you better get out of there quick. Run from it quick. Alright, Amos 9, Amos 9 and 8, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Right, the, the second death, the death by nuclear missiles. Alright, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. For, for lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in the sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. So, it's normal for this, this was happening here. 
having all these million and one doctrine is the plan of the Lord, right? To sift the nation of Israel, right? To sift out the, 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 the elect, the tower, the flock, from the rest of the Israelites, right? Because uh, according to Zechariah 13 and 8, the Lord said, you know, what you, you know two thirds are going to be destroyed and one third is going to remain in America. You know, and the same thing is going, is going to happen pretty much around the world. The chosen Israelites will be saved and the rest of the, the mass multitude of the rest of the Israelites are going to be destroyed because they're not going to be able to get to understand this doctrine and repent and be converted. All right, because why? It wasn't given unto them. All right, Isaiah 6 and 9, Romans 11 and 7, as I, as I, uh, I mentioned earlier. Okay, but a serious destruction is coming, and it's and it's coming. It, it's starting where, at the house of the Lord. All right, you know, um, judgment will begin at the house of the Lord. I mean, judgment, judgment, judgment will begin. I don't know if I'm right, typing it correctly. At the house. <clears throat> Take this here. Judgment. It's lucky. Yeah. Judgment. Will. It's lucky. Yeah. We'll begin at the house. Let's go here. First Peter 4 and 17. It's lucky. Yeah. Um, this is the book of First Peter, chapter 4, and verse 17. It says, um, let's, let's, let's highlight here. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of the heavenly father. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? Right? So those who know the Israelites, that's where the judgment is beginning. Alright, so, so you have to be in fear. You know, and, and make sure that you know you serve the Lord the right way. You're being exactly what he told you to do. The proper doctrine, going out to the highways and byways, teaching, you know, once is your lot. Alright? You know, it's a fearful thing. But even the Lord said, I know for those, some of them will be preaching, some will be casting out demons, performing miracles, and the Lord going to say, you know, away from me, I, I've never known you. All right? So it's a fearful thing. You know, you have to do exactly as the Lord told you to do. All right? You have to do exactly as the Lord told you to do. Okay? And we're not really worried for those who don't believe, those who mock and scoff. At the end of the day, you know, we're gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be made manifest who the men of the Lord are that we are true. Right? Because the Lord's prophecies are not going to lie. Right? All of it, all of the Lord's word um, is gonna to come to pass. Romans 3 and 3 says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Heavenly Father without effect? The Heavenly Father forbid. Yea, let the Heavenly Father be true. But every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sins. Right? The Lord is going to be justified in his sins. And the prophets will be justified too when, that, when his word comes to pass. All right? And mightest overcome when thou art judged. Because they don't believe. They, they don't have the gift of faith. Right? As the scriptures say, uh, um, faith is a gift. Right? Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of the Heavenly Father. Alright? It's a gift of the Heavenly Father. All right? Not of works, lest any man should boast. So men have, some men have more faith than others, but all in all is a gift. Whatever portion of faith you have is a gift from the Heavenly Father. Okay? And um, that's what that's going to determine your salvation too. I mean, these sins are going to come to pass. And same way you see that, you know, the Hebrew Israelites were right. A lot of people are going to be seeing it, but it's going to be too late for them. There's a cut-off period, all right? And that cut-off period is closely approaching. You know, way, way you're not going to be able to repent and convert and be converted, all right? So you best believe and understand that there ain't no time to fully sky lacking. Ezekiel 33 and 31, it says, and, and then, and they come unto thee, and they come unto thee as thy people cometh, and they sit before thee as thy people, a lot of people hear new word, right? And they hear thy words, but they will not do them, right? They look at it like entertainment. They like to hear old song, how we're rebuking songs, you know, that, that, you know, feeling. But Jake, not serious, all right? So when they, when they don't really believe that, you know, what we're seeing is going to come to pass, 
But he's seen it. And a lot of people are seeing it now and converting and repenting and converting. But many, many more, you know, are going to play and, and, and make fun of what we're saying and think it's entertainment until the last minute when it's going to be too late and you can't repent no more. And judgment is at hand. Judgment it comes down like a, like a crashing hammer on top of them. Pounding them to, to, to pieces. Alright? It says, And they shall come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people. And they hear them thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love. Yeah, there's talk. But with their heart and mind goeth after their covetousness, the things of this world, which going to pass away. Alright? The world pass it away. And the things of the world. Alright? So, holy conversation is where it's supposed to be right now. Your, 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 your mind is supposed to be on this wood and on prophecy. Alright? Um, Ezekiel 33 and 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. Yeah, so it sounds like entertainment. In like a harp playing, a guitar, a piano player, playing pleasantly. You know, you're um, feeling good, lifting up your spirits. But then, but then it just passes through one ear and goes out the other. Right, and they don't have, they don't take it to heart, to mind. Right, which the word for, for heart in Hebrew is la'ab, which is mind. Yeah, your mind. For they hear thy words, but they do not, they do them not. They were not going to do, no act on it. They continue in the ways of the world. They continue going to partying and going to all these late night uh, um, revelry parties. Continue playing carnival. Right, you continue committing adultery, stealing, you know. And all these things that the Lord forbid, you continue in that lifestyle. All right? But it's not going to work out well for you in the end. Right? Ezekiel 33 and 33 it says, And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Right? So what all we're saying is going to come to pass. Same way the guys say in Hebrews, lies were right. Then shall they know that I, it, that a prophet had been among them. Right? Verse 33 in the NLT, it says, but when all these terrible things happen to them, which we see the terrible things already beginning, right? As they certainly will, they will know a prophet has been among them. And this is going to ramp up faster and faster every year. All right? Every, every month, pra practically. But these things, the prophecy is coming so hard and heavy right now. All right? So you best believe it's time to repent, you know, or be destroyed. All right? It's coming. It's coming. Right, second is just in fact, let me get this book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus 5 and 7. It says, Make no tarrying to turn unto the Lord and put not off from day to day, you know, and definitely don't fall, don't go, don't stop doing the work. All right, you know, um, take any hand from the plow, you know, let's go take, let's just pipe and plow, let's see what that brings up. Luke 9 and 62, it says, And Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, looking at the Moors, looking at the Egyptology, you know, thinking about going into witchcraft, Orisha, all right? You know, thinking about just being a witch or a warlock, all right? Going back into the Christian church, right? Hey, no man looking back is fit for the kingdom of the Heavenly Father. Facts. Why? Because they're bringing Yahweh Shai to open shame. To open shame. Alright? This is what you're doing. Alright? Hebrews 6 and 4 it says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit, right? Which is a gift. And have, and have tasted the good word of the heavenly father and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing they crucify to themselves the son of the heavenly father which is Yahweh Shai afresh. And put him to an open shame. Alright. You're not going to be able to make it. You know. You're nailing the Lord to the cross again. Right. And you're shaming him. Okay, you enter the world. Okay, facts. So, hey, can't do that. That's destruction. Sirach 5 and 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly, which these devils are playing on that word a lot, 
sudden, sudden events, sudden shock events, World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, right? For suddenly shall the wrath of the Heavenly Father come forth, and in thy security, your comfort, where you're thinking that your, your money could save you, you know, your paraclesis, which is your comfort, you know, guess what? Thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So, don't be conflicted, right? The Hebrew is light, all right, we are right, we, you know, you know, that's not a boast, that's not a boast of ourselves, but in our Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, or Yahweh Shai Mashiach, right? So, don't be conflicted, let an eye, keep an eye single, keep it on this wood, right? And I pray this lesson was edifying, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory, so we're going to be justified, I give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakodash, double honor unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful electing next time. Shalom, wa bad babal.